Welcome to the viewers, and um, we're doing an informal Q&A here with the filmmakers, Camilla and Jem Beckett, and also the producers of the film, The Seeds of Vanda Nashiva. My name's Debbie Barker, and I've worked with Vanda Nashiva for many years on agriculture, food, climate, trade, many of the issues that you saw in the film. And I'm actually also in the film as well. So uh, welcome. And um, Jim, Camilla, and maybe I'll start with you, Jim, and ask, um, when did you first meet Vandana? Uh, I was involved in a series of environmental symposia, which took place on board a ship and brought religious leaders and scientists together to talk about the environment, particularly as it involved the oceans. This was quite an original idea at the time. And Vandana Shiva, this lady from India, appeared among all these distinguished scientists and religious leaders, and she was certainly no less distinguished. Mm -hmm. So that's how I got to know her. And one of the symposia we hope to do in India on the Ganges. And when I was there talking to her about it, I proposed, uh, I, I said, uh, gosh, you know, let's make a really interesting film about you. Uh, would you be willing to do that? Oh, sure. Okay, so that's how it all started. Little did she know it would be, what, seven years of you all following her around with the camera, right? Eight. <laughs> world. Eight, okay. Um, and then, so I guess that late, Camilla, uh, I know you, and, and to both of you, but let's start with you, Camilla. Um, what, I mean, as filmmakers, you have many issues and that you want to make films about and have made films about. Why a film about Vandana? Well, sort of getting to know her and meeting her through these symposia, um, we were just profoundly impressed by the way she was able to connect the dots between issues that we really cared about before, namely climate environment, um, she was so enlightening around bringing in the um, the pieces around food and agriculture, which you know have a huge impact um, on on the environment and the climate. And she was able to tell the story and make those connections in a way that were really, really understandable. Um, and so we felt that it was important to not only address all of those. Um, those issues that she was raising um, when she was on these symposia, but also she's such a compelling character. She's so charismatic. She's so articulate. She's just such a rock star that we really thought that to tell the story of food, agriculture, climate, environment, biodiversity, the rights of small farmers, the health of people, food security, food insecurity, all of those kind of things. Nobody could tell the story like she could and hold the attention of an audience for, um, for the length of time that it is required to get to know what is really going on in these, in these spaces. Right, and as filmmakers, you probably noticed this too, but as someone who's known her for well, decades now and traveled all over with her and uh, as, as you probably observed, she doesn't seem she's not conscious of a camera following her around. So that also makes her a really compelling and charismatic subject, right? Because she's the same person, whether the camera is on or off, right? And that I really enjoyed about your film to see, it wasn't an artificial Vandana in any way, you know? Um, yeah, at the, sa at the same time, she is very media savvy. I mean, she's a genius. She's so, she's so smart. So you're saying she doesn't know where the camera is. Uh, sometimes, for example, uh, in one of the shots, uh, she went into her uh, a place where her office is, and she held the door open for the cameraman, I noticed. <laughs> so, so I, I mean, she's, she, she knows. Sure. Where uh, the bit where the bear crosses yeah. creek, as we say in New England. Yes, I think the point is she is a person who she doesn't change her. Like I said, there's no artificial 
She doesn't, oh, the camera's on and I'm going to now speak this way and be this way. She's seamlessly Vandana, and that's the same as whether she's meeting with Prince Charles or meeting with farmers, you know, in Africa or India. She's the same person, which is... Absolutely, you know. absolutely. She is, you look up authentic in the dictionary, there she is. So I'm curious what... Um, you found to be over this long eight year arc, um, what were some of the challenges of filming, getting the film made? Um, yeah, each of you probably have a good perspective on that. I'll say finance. Finding the money yeah. to do it. That's why it took so long. You know, we, we live in a culture where independent filmmakers, mom and pop, filmmakers depend on grants or having a rich uncle, which neither of us do have. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'll just mention one thing that uh, Camilla I'm sure has others, uh, but uh, there really is a challenge in, in raising money because documentary film films turn out to be expensive. Mm -hmm. Camilla, what's your take on this? So yeah, there was a bit of that. So we sort of, um, you know, we chipped away, right? Raising grants, um, chipped away, chipped away, chipped away. And, um, you know, we were lucky because we did find um, some, some supporters and there were, we got a lot of support in kind from allies that we made while we were doing it. And it was um, a good experience and all of that front. But I think that, uh, you know, if I had to think about the challenges, um, yes, that also, the story is global. So we had to travel and we had to try and um, catch Vandana as this was all pre-COVID. So she was crisscrossing the planet at an unbelievable rate. And so we had to try and fit in with her schedule all the time. Back to that sense of Vandana doesn't prioritize, you know, she's doing her work. Um, she doesn't prioritize certain things over others. So we had to chase her around basically. Um, she was very generous with her time when we got it, but um, she didn't stop what she was really there and is here to do. And then I think for me, the biggest challenge was doing the archival footage um, because a lot of these events happened before the digital age um, in places where cameras weren't present. And so we spent quite a lot of our eight years digging for ways to illustrate her story. As um, we know, Vandana works on, she's had this lifetime of working on so many issues. And while yes, they all relate, it's difficult though. A lot of people tend to, um, in filmmaking or, or covering a, a person like Vandana who's worked on different issues, they may only see it as, oh, now she's working on trees. Now she's working on water. Now she's working on seeds. Well, all of these things, um, interrelate and are woven together. And that's part of the point of Vandana's message, right? But as a filmmaker or storyteller, I think that's, uh, it, it's a challenge to show how these things weave together without taking hours and hours and hours to do so. And I think- Yeah, you guys that's, uh, that's a very, a very good point, Debbie. I, I might say just on the other side of challenge, as a filmmaker, the commitment you make to the subject you want to do uh, is so important because it might no longer be relevant after two years, not to speak of eight years. But we got really lucky because Vandana's message eight years later is more important and has is much more relevant. And so uh, <laughs> we're in a way very fortunate uh, that it took eight years. And because she has been proved to be right on so many fronts, as we've said in the film, she's controversial, people attacked her, et cetera, but she's proved to be right on a number of those issues. What were some of the rewarding moments or, and or were there particular scenes that you shot and you really liked, but for whatever reason, we don't see them in the film. Chai tea at Navdanya. <laughs> yes, exactly. Going to Navdanya is just like, I highly recommend the experience. Um, not only because you really learn so much on the ground, you know, like it's the difference between reading a book and having life experience. And so, um, you know, I would encourage people who, if they possibly can, 
um, to do one of Dr. Shiva's courses or if they can find their way to Navdanya at some point, because there is everything she talks about in practice, in real time, in real space, um, the seed saving. But yes, we love being there because we were also amongst people who were really, really steeped in the work. And so we learned so much about what organic regenerative you, um, you know, ecological food systems and, and how it all works and um, how it supports people, the planet, the bugs and the bees and all of those kind of things. Um, but also the food was fantastic. Yep. <laughs> Talking about the food that's so fabulous on the farm, right? They just had little like burners in the back or a campfire and little gas burners and out came this amazing meal, you know, day after day wow. and tea. And I, was telling Vanden at the time, I said, this is the uh, Chez Panisse of India is on Navdanya farm, right? <laughs> Being on the farm too and seeing the team, the Navdanya team, who really bolsters all the work that Vanden is out in the world talking about, um, but she has a very dedicated team on the farm and it's such a pleasure to get to know all them and yeah. see, say the relevance of of what she's talking about on an international scale to see it so relevant on a local level. The farm itself is she walks the walk yeah. and we have her walking around the farm. But anyway, she walks the walk in the sense she took a totally useless, infertile piece of land and, and turned it really into a flourishing paradise. So she has done it. It's not just that she's writing 20 books about it. Well, some of them talk about it. Uh, so, you know, she is a farmer as, very, as well as a very eloquent spokesperson for what the farm represented. Right. And I guess we should let folks know if they are interested in visiting the, far visiting the farm or attending the um, Bija University that's held on the farm, they can go to navdanya.org or another website based in the U.S., friendsofnadanya.org, and you can learn about the courses that you can take on the farm and register for them. Um, okay, so you've done this masterful job of a film. What are your plans uh, for the film and beyond? We have big plans. <laughs> we have big plans because part of the reason, in fact, a big part of the reason of making the film was really so that we could um, spread the message of ecological agriculture so that we sort of could change minds and behavior and even policy towards more ecological food systems because there's just no question the, the 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 proof of the pudding is there that is the future for mitigating climate change for restoring biodiversity um, and feeding the world you know it works as a model to feed the world to to have socially just local communities to you know address this sort of this this corporate takeover of our lives and um so we wanted to get that message out there and we still want to get that message out there so we've just finished we finished the film actually last year we've done a film festival run it um it's done really well we're so gratified it's sort of quite humbling actually to see the response the film has received and of course that's in no um, that's uh, largely because Vandana is so articulate and charismatic and her life story has been just so incredible. How she got from, you know, a young girl to where she is now, it's just right there. It's a hero's journey, you know, in of itself, it's an interesting story, her life. So, um, so what we're doing now is we're, we're right now raising for an impact campaign, which will give us a bit of heft to get the film into community screenings in front of policy, policy makers, um, also in sort of schools, educational institutions, like wherever there is a setting where people can gather and watch this film and talk about the issues, um, learn a little bit more, make connections. We are using the film to do that. And so that's where that's the next sort of phase. Um, that we're, we're yeah. doing with the finished product. Great. And how can um, viewers watching you now help? Is there a website, a donation site they can go to? How can folks help in this effort? So there is a donation link on our website, vandanashivamovie.com. And then to know more about Vandana's work, go to navadanya.com 
or friendsofnavdanya.com. It's .org. Okay. We did do, um, we sent through our social media, actually, um, a sort of call for some, some questions from people, and we got a whole bunch, and a few of them um, I'd love to throw over to you, if that's okay, and if we've got some time. Um, sure. <laughs> so um, one of the things, the most important thing, really, and, and you know, I know that you've worked with with Vandana for for many many years. Um, we're international director for Center for Food Safety. Um, you're extremely versed in the issues, and one of the most fundamental questions that came through, and I think it's worth answering, because why do we do it, right? Why are we, why are we advocating for regenerative, organic, ecological food systems? And so the question literally was how can organic solve the issues of the future uh, food crisis? First of all, let me just kind of step back and reframe that because a lot of us working on food systems like to say we're working on organic and beyond. And in an international setting, we use the terms agroecological or regenerative perhaps food systems. So um, just to frame that a little more broadly, I guess it might be helpful. Um, there are many, many reasons, and Camilla, you've mentioned some of those reasons, but one of the most urgent issues in front of us, of course, today is climate change. So what is what few people realize and what is often not part of the discussion when people are talking about climate change is that our current industrial food system uh, represents 25 to 30% of greenhouse gas emissions. I mean, that's astonishing. Right, and we right. still are not having in the media, at government uh, media levels, um, even at the international climate change talks, which are coming up in Egypt in November, there's just very little attention paid to our food systems and the damage that it's causing. Mm -hmm. So that um, moves us more toward, we need to, it's very critical to transform food systems toward agroecological, regenerative, organic food systems. And that not only can reduce our greenhouse gases, um, but also when you have the healthy soils, which these smaller regenerative systems, uh, it's all about keeping the soil healthy, you can actually draw down excess carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So that's a huge um, mitigation uh, tool that we could be using tomorrow, you know, if we would implement and transition toward these ecological uh, food systems. Um, and then uh, also it better ensures food security, water security, and food sovereignty, because along with having systems that are not dependent on chemical inputs, which are part of the problem and causing greenhouse gases, you're also in these systems growing food local, primarily for local populations. And one of the reasons right now that the industrial food system is 25 to 30% of the problem is that includes, yes, it includes the on-farm chemical inputs and nitrogen fertilizers and things like that, but it's also taking into consideration this kind of crazy global food trading system that we have where you know you're needing now to package food and refrigerate and transport in these um, shipping containers that use even dirtier fossil fuels and gasoline and it's a crazy system not only environmentally but for a food security purpose because often we're trading what we call like uh, food goods, you know, I mean, for example, countries that are totally self-sufficient in growing their own rice through trade agreements or economic agreements, there's a crazy now uh, system where they are now exporting their rice and importing rice from other places. So it just doesn't make sense at, on, on any level of, um, uh, like I say, ecologically for food security or any of those things. So the seed, then bringing this back to, you know, the seeds of Vandana Shiva, the seed is critical, as Vandana said, the seed is the source of life. And we need indigenous seeds, seeds that have been bred in many cases for millennia by farmers in regions that have been adapted to that area, both ecologically, this, to those soils, to the weather conditions, and culturally, that's where it starts. And those seeds don't need the chemical inputs that industrial agriculture seeds need. And they also require a lot less water. 
they have longer root systems than say a hybrid commercialized seed which has short little roots and they need a lot of chemicals to make them grow fast and a lot of water so that's um there are all kinds of reasons i hope i kind of summarize though why it's uh our current system is a huge problem but a transition to the right kind of food system could be a huge solution for the planet for all of us right and i would add you know what we want policymakers to do is not just pull the rug out of farmers or uh, out from under farmers i'm thinking of sort of holland or sri lanka uh, what's going on there right now. It's, you know, we can't blame farmers for where we are. Farmers have become entrapped into this industrial system that has sort of been decided, you know, over and beyond, beyond them. They know what's going on. They know their soils are dying. They know that the climate is changing. They're having a harder and harder time pr producing, but the system is so set up that it's very difficult to get out of it. So, you know, one of the reasons, again, for trying to get this film and Vandana's message in front of policymakers is that governments and local, local governments, including, you know, national, international, um, local can support farmers to make this transition. You can't just say, okay, stop doing it now or, or blame farmers for what is going on now. It's Absolutely. not them. Yeah, when we have national policies that are giving, providing the wrong incentives or the incentives to do the chemical intensive monoculture type farming, farmers have no choice. They're desperate at this point often to just keep their land. Um, and, you know, we see that unfortunately around the world, the trend is still the dominant trend, I should say, there is more trend, yes, toward regenerative or organic, but still when you go even say to the international climate negotiations that are coming up, one of the big initiatives that's sponsored by the US and many major foundations and a lot of governments have signed on to it is um, an agriculture policy that's just more of the same and more dependent on genetically modified seeds, on artificial intelligence, on robotics. And that's what's getting funded in these international circles. And so farmers, as you say, they need the incentives and the help to be able to transition to ecological farming. They absolutely, absolutely do. Yeah. And so we just have to reprioritize. And so, you know, and a shout out to all the, you know, the enormous amount of activists and scientists and environmentalists and journalists and content creators and all of those things who are trying to get um, you know, pushing back. I think there is movement. We just need to do it faster. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And we always need to be supporting farmers as we go because, you know, without farmers, where are we? Debbie, there was another question, uh, which I thought was a really good one. You know, farmers, you know, um, a rural landscapes are one thing about land management and taking care of soils and stuff there. What can we do as urban dwellers to protect soil, seed, you know, the canopy in, in, if we live in a city or we live in a more urban area, um, what, what, what can people do? Well, the thing, um, the first thing that comes to mind is in urban communities, you're going largely, you're shopping for your food. So the kind of food you're going to buy is going to have a immediate impact on rural communities, on landscapes all across your country you live in and around the world. So if you want to be sure that you're supporting the kind of farming, say in the US, the organic label does mean something. There are standards that go along. You can't get the label organic. There are some flaws in it for sure, but by and large, that means your food is being produced in a way that's keeping soils healthy, that's using less water, and that then ultimately is contributing less um, uh, greenhouse gases or maybe even mitigating and or drawing down carbon dioxide um, out of the atmosphere as we talked about how good farming can do that so that's that is something just immediately it seems like if everyone did tomorrow that would make a huge impact on the planet um, and then of course you know people can do their gardens you know rooftop gardens or whatever but um, but I know, you know, most folks, I think, in the practical world, leading busy urban lives, um, 
watch, watch where you shop, go to your farmer's markets, buy directly from your farmer, ask them questions that, you know, the kind of farming that they're doing and, and just be sure and support the right kind of farming in your food choices. Right. I agree. I mean, I always sort of say vote with your fork, right? So if you're living in the U S and you're buying an apple from New, New Zealand, don't do it. Don't buy it. You know, no. buy a local apple. And I, you know, I know that organic can be expensive and there's a sort of mythology that it has to do with the elite. But I think that if we all chip away as much as we can um, by demanding more organic, more local, more fair traded foods, um, then that'll be scaled out finally. And so that will become the norm, hopefully, um, right. over time. And so those who can afford it, do it um, and help yeah. the rest of us along. Yeah, and again, we should point out the reason why um, yeah, it kind of drives me around the bend when I hear that organic is elitist. Well, farmers do not get subsidies to grow organic food like they do to grow non-organic things like corn or soy, things like that. So again, it's not the farmers we should be pointing a finger at. We need to be sure that the more people that support organic, and if there's a huge demand for it, and the farmers can make money doing it, then that's good. They're going to convert their farms from industrial methods to organic method methods. And at the same time, we need to push those levers in our governments, local, national, regional, international, to be sure that they support the right kind of ecological farming and give the incentives toward that kind of food system instead of an industrial food system. Right, exactly. And we can start advocating in our own local communities, at our own city halls. Yeah. Um, because once you know, you know, you, and the, I think the film, sorry to say, I think the film does a good job of laying out how we've gotten here. Yeah. Um, Vandana's work, Vandana is very good in articulating how we got here. And we try and express that in the film too. So once you have a deeper understanding of why we're in the situation, it's easier to share that message with, you know, our families, our neighbors, our local policymakers. And so with awareness, which again, sort of brings me back to our outreach and impact campaign with greater awareness, once you understand, it's easier to advocate for, for a systemic change, I think.